Today on PC Sherpa, I brought in somebody who has a PC that is probably worth more than some of my organs on the black market. He just wanted to find some ways to improve his performance and his visual fidelity, and so I tried my best to help him out with that. It may not be the same sort of uplift that you've seen in some of my other videos, but I wanted to also showcase a scenario where sometimes people don't get a big jump in performance, and I wanted to also explain why. If you didn't know, PC Sherpa is a series where I take one of you guys in a one-on-one -on -one conversation to help figure out what's going wrong with your performance in Tarkov, and to improve your overall experience. If you like the series, make sure to hit the usual buttons, and if you'd like help or would want a chance to join this series, the Sherpa form is listed below, along with my Discord. The Discord's the first link. I highly recommend you join that because there is a thriving community of almost a thousand people, which is kind of crazy, who can help you figure out your performance issues in Tarkov. There's even a help forum so you can post your individual questions or concerns in there and get direct answers from one of us. And finally, I stream on Fridays at 6.30 p.m. CST, and I also do my PC Sherpa Live series on Sundays from 1.30 p.m. CST to about 5 or 5.30 p.m. CST. So if you want to get pulled and talk with me live on stream, you can totally join on Sundays as well and then ask me any questions, but feel free to ask me on Fridays too. With all that done though, let's get straight into the video. So just to recap, uh, the specs we got, we got 4090 and we got yeah. an 11700 kf right yeah uh, custom water cooling loop and all the all the yeah on both all the works yeah. yeah jesus also the ram sticks so i used to have four times a giga ram mm -hmm. in there and then my utilization of my ram just started jumping up to 60 percent, 70 percent sometimes so i was like oh what's going on here so i decided to go well spoken to cyberpower who's basically the company who's built my computer and he advised me, well, you know, you can go for another RAM if you like, uh, but for two sticks, because my motherboard is a dual channel. Yeah. And I was like, right, okay, it does make sense. But then another guy I played Tarkov with, he said, if you've got four slots in your motherboard, he said, you know, you're better off just filling them all in. Oh. And that way you can. The slots are there. If he needs to use them, it can. Okay. So I listened to the company first. Yeah. I have gone ahead with the two sticks. So I had 64, okay. so I went for 232s. Yeah. I put those in, but there was a delay. Like the hideout took longer to load and everything else. So then I have gone back to the company. I have gone back to them and exchanged it for four sticks of no. what are they now? Yeah, I'm on four no. sticks of what are they now? 16, 16. gigabytes. Oh, yeah, but no. they are 3,200 megahertz what? no sorry no four thousand no four thousand okay. my bad okay. four thousand megahertz running four sticks isn't necessarily a bad thing right but there's some yeah. people who have had like i had somebody on my pc strip alive actually he's like yeah i got a i think he had a 10 900k and what was his i forgot what his gpu was i think it, i forgot it was like a 3080 maybe he got 128 gigabytes of ram uh oh, wow. and when he did that he had, so he had four 32 gig sticks. The clock speeds on his CPU were drastically reduced in order to support the XMP RAM. And there's a lot more variables to this. But when you have four DIMMs in there, you're putting more pressure to, to feed power and voltage to those, but also for your memory controller's sake on your CPU. Uh, so your CPU has to do some power budgeting shifts in order to make sure that it can manage running all of that RAM at that higher frequency or all mm -hmm. those RAM dims at those higher frequency. And so, and so I'm not really comfortable with that answer. I thought about it for a while and watched it back. And I realized that I think I'm going to need some more help to actually fully answer that question. I went to my discord, talked with some people in there who are way more knowledgeable on memory overclocking than I am and came down to the solution of resetting his BIOS and seeing how it runs with just stock XMP settings. Well, stock with XMP, I should say. And then from there, seeing if there was any clock behavioral issues. If there was, he could go back and take out two sticks that are not the first primary slots to be filled, which is normally slots one and three. And then from there, see if there's any performance impact afterward. Whenever I can get an update about this and whenever he goes through and sees if he gets any more performance, I'll let you guys know in the comments below. But generally what I said in the video is what I observed. It's just, I want to actually get a solid explanation as to why that is the case. Memory overclocking really isn't my thing and I need to learn more about it. So I don't want to provide any misinformation, 
I just want to let you guys know that that was my theory at the time, and we're going to be looking into it more. And maybe I'll even make another video on it when I can gather some more information and get a more stable foundation on it. But yeah, let's keep going with the video. And so I want to make sure that that's not happening with you. Uh, and I also mm -hmm. want to see, um, you know, there were some settings, you know, because we DM'd beforehand. We'll walk through those too. It'll be important for us to check, you know, your settings. I want to see what we got going on in the background. You said you had IQ uh, previously. So we'll see how that's going. We'll see if we can manage some of those. As mm -hmm. far as, because you mentioned earlier with your RAM, you were like, oh, it's getting like 70, 80%. Uh, RAM allocation or like just RAM usage, you can think of it as like not being a problem until it is because mm -hmm. it's it won't impact your performance until you start hitting the threshold. Until it okay. starts dumping RAM to the paging file, which is like spillover RAM space on your drive pretty much. It makes like a little file for spillover. Uh, until it starts doing that with data, you, you're fine. And that happens when that starts mm -hmm. to fill up. Uh, and also ARC mm -hmm. was the automatic RAM cleaner thing. So if you use that on occasion while you're playing, you should never mm -hmm. hit 32 gigs. Um, and I was shocked when I brought that one guy on. He had 128. I was like, holy mm. shit. And so that's why we're going to yeah, check that too. Yeah, sure. So let's just quickly, in your settings, let's look at them before we jump in. I just want to see what you got going on there. So you got... Yeah, sure. The thing that I experienced with the 4090 is that the more it turns these up, the, the less effect it has, to be honest. It's still works fine even if i maxed everything out it just seems to work oh, okay yeah. unless i'm on streets um that's where you see the biggest bottleneck happening yep or the drop sorry no bottleneck. yeah drop yeah we'll talk about all these when we get in game and i'll show you we'll walk like i'll walk mm -hmm. you through each setting and then we'll see and nice. then post effects what do you got there okay i to play with these a little uh, yeah that's, no that's fine you have the room to play with these so it's fine um and then sound you have binaural sound. on right okay yeah uh, I personally like binaural as well. Uh, I've been, just so you know, I've been hearing like mm -hmm. a couple reports about people having some abnormal performance and it ha starting to have an impact on CPU bound scenarios again, mm -hmm. like yours, but I haven't tested that or had the chance to test that again yet. But mm -hmm. we'll keep that in mind too. You can't change it when you're in game, but for now we'll just leave it. So then here, right? Now you're looking here, just choose like, uh, look, yeah, just straight there. Cause when we're, when I benchmark, um, this is sort of like an eyeballing way of benchmarking, uh, but it's it's good to have like an intensive situation. And this is a pretty good place to like have most of the game's variables in play because like you're looking far. There's a really wide, long view distance. So I'll be able to show you like the, the, the difference in all the settings and stuff. So right now, before we get started, as a reference for everybody, we're sitting at roughly 95 FPS, which this is offline, obviously but you're clearly still CPU bound. Uh, and I think you're still going to be CPU bound even after all the stuff we do today. I'm just gonna try to alleviate that bind as much as possible and also improve the image quality that you're playing at uh, as well at the same time. I wanna, the things I wanna address too um, is the blurriness. Like there's a lot of blurriness on the textures. I'm sure you can see that. Yeah. I wanna address the shimmering. If you can see on like the bars in the top left, we're gonna try to get rid of that yeah. for you as well. And we'll also try to improve the clarity the image to make it a bit clearer for you to hit targets and hopefully oh. alleviate some of the cpu bottleneck too first let's go to the settings so automatic ram cleaner you have 32 gigs or 64 gigs right now so you don't need that that's fine okay um i also want to check too because we do have those four sticks if you could open your task manager really quick i just want to make sure everything is set properly there so in the task manager uh go to memory yep okay it's at four thousand four out of four and then I want to make sure too through, actually I will be able to see through MSI Afterburner. I'll show you this too. I want to make sure we're getting proper clocks on our CPU as well. Make sure nothing's going wrong there. So in MSI Afterburner, if you could open up that window again, you'll find it in the bottom right. And so in there you see the pulse monitor. That's like, a, it's got like a little uh, graph on, yep, that sure. one. Mm -hmm. So that right there will show you, remember all the things that have that black check mark in the settings? Yeah. This shows you the graph of all of those. So regardless mm -hmm. if it's on the uh, overlay or not, they'll be in here. And mm -hmm. this will be really good for us to see, you know, what your CPU is clocking at, what each, if each core is bottlenecking, like you can see core or thread by thread what the usage is like. So this will be really good for us to see that. I want you to just scroll down here to see the 
core by core usage and then core by core clock as well. So just keep scrolling for me. CP 12, 13, 14, 15, okay. 16. Okay. Now keep going. I want to see the clocks for each now. 4,700, 4,700. Okay. It seems to be max 4,800. Okay. And then what I'm going to do really quick is I'm just going to look up what the default um, clock 11700 KF. 3.6. 3.6 gigahertz, but I got the game mode enabled in BIOS. Okay. Yep, operates can boost up to five depending on the workload. Okay. It's pretty close to what it should be, so that's that's good to see. It's not like <laughs> for the other guy that I had on stream who had uh the 128 gigs of RAM, uh that mm -hmm. said 3.6 uh gigahertz. Okay. Uh with okay. this 10900 k So that's a lot better than than that looked so if, if it is because like if that's any lower because of the ram it's not by that much so that's good to see mm -hmm. it was not that before um when i was when i had the 32 gigs of ram mm -hmm. on four sticks and same with the two sticks when i had those partially for a couple of days in there before i returned i ran back it was the same it was 4700 okay it didn't go up really well, let's take a look at those yeah. settings next if you go to graphics so since you have a 4090 high textures should be fine you shouldn't be running mm -hmm. into any issues with that but you do have streets of tarkov lower texture resolution mode on uh -huh. which if you didn't know that's just like if you're running at high textures globally you are then running uh -huh. on medium textures on streets it just uh -huh. like takes it down a notch okay so um if you wanted to, you could try high textures on streets. It'll be really funny to see how much uh, actual mm -hmm. VRAM you use, but uh, you can always change that afterward because you can't change yeah. it when you're in game. Um, yeah, we can do that after. So for next for shadows quality, you can probably get away with running it higher than low if you want to, mm -hmm. because you have all that extra GPU headroom. It it'll increase the actual resolution of the shadows. So at further distances, it might look a bit less shimmery on those shadows. So they won't, you know, obviously there's a set render distance for shadows, but uh, they'll be higher quality, which, you know, will look nicer. You have the ability mm -hmm. to do that. Now, mm -hmm. next, object LOD quality. That's one of the settings that can actually affect your CPU mount performance. So for now, mm -hmm. just really quick, go back out and let's see what your FPS is at because the weather probably changed. 102. Okay, I'm just letting it get stable. So between 100 and 103, which is fine. Uh, mm -hmm. And then go ahead and set that down to two real quick. We'll see if we can notice any difference in offline. Okay. So that controls... Well, actually, I should ask before. Do you know what that does? The LOD. Yeah, the object LOD quality. Uh, is it not something to do with rendering distance for objects yes it's the level of detail of objects at range mm -hmm. so that that controls the distance at which their lower quality counterparts ports parts are uh swapped in for example if you wanted to move and look or just like turn to your right for a little bit towards the park mm -hmm. you see those mm -hmm. trees over there mm -hmm. like um the ones that are further away those ones are turning into little like 2d sprites you see some of the smaller ones yeah, over there nah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you switch over to three, what you were at before, those should no longer be 2D sprites. Mm -hmm. And what that's... So we're getting a bit thicker. Yeah, well, that's the... That controls how far away those 2D sprites come into play. It also controls, mm -hmm. like, the LED quality on other objects, too, besides trees, obviously. But trees are one of the easiest way to ways to see the effect of it i'd recommend just for a little bit of extra performance to go to 2.5 because i think that okay. when when you're playing at two it can kind of be a nuisance all the pop in because uh, i mean for me i can see it but um if you can't that's that's completely fine but that should give you at least a little bit more cpu bound headroom shouldn't put as much pressure on it which would be nice sorry what about the um physical cores shall i have that um, on or shall i have that switched off i'm gonna get to that's like a that's a whole nother section because <laughs> okay. with that I, I want to instead of using that i want to have a lot of stuff going on in the background i want to see mm -hmm. if we can try to use process lasso to sort of isolate that stuff 
and mm -hmm. see if we can improve the performance that way. So next is overall visibility. Set it all the way down to 400. Yeah. You see how that building and the horizon's just gone? Mm -hmm. uh, that's what that yeah. does. That's yeah. like buildings that are sort of outside of the playable area are affected by that setting. And also mm -hmm. some like big landmarks are also affected by that setting. So like I think Wood Sniper Rock, for example, is one of those places mm -hmm. where this setting could have an effect. Which is why I tend to recommend most people to play between 1,000 and 1,500. But if you want yeah. to play higher than that, I haven't noticed any uh, issue with playing higher than that. So uh, mm. feel yeah, free to have that set to whatever floats your boat. Anti-aliasing next, your TA high, that's my preferred one. But mm -hmm. uh, what I was planning to do with you, if you wanted, because mm -hmm. you have so much extra headroom, uh, mm -hmm. have you heard of deal dsr i think i heard of it in your video it's to do with dls but works the opposite way yes yep exactly that so i was planning on walking you through and getting that set up so that you'd be able to use that in combination with dlss in game mm -hmm. to get like remember that shimmering and stuff like that mm -hmm. all of that will stabilize out when we turn that stuff okay. on uh, so you won't yeah, be using you won't be using anti-aliasing after that, uh, but we'll do that after I talk about the other settings here, just so that uh, yeah, sure, because that'll be a little bit of a separate topic. So we'll we'll come back to anti-aliasing, the upscalers. We'll you know we'll talk about that again. And next is HBAO. This is one of those settings okay. that um that I think you might like. I don't know though. I don't know what your preference is. I... Go to where are you at right now in game? I want to just find a place where I'll be able to show you what HBAO does. Oh, this is perfect. Okay, yeah. So mm -hmm. you see the little, I don't know what that is, like orange street barricade right in front of you? Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. You see how there's like, a, come on, say. Yeah, you see how there's like no shadow whatsoever? Yeah. Um, yeah. Go and turn on HPAO to, uh, you have probably room to set it higher, but it does get darker the higher you go for corners and stuff like that. So go ahead and just like try a couple and see what you like. I don't recommend yeah. like colored ultra though, but you see now that you turn on HPAO, yeah. there's a shadow under it. There's also like, yeah. as your hands wrapped around the gun, you see like there's a little bit of shadowing around the gun and stuff like that. Yeah. I really enjoy yeah, it's the thickness. Yeah. Yeah. I really enjoy objects. how that looks. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it adds a lot of depth to the image and makes it less like, you know, flat and. Strong, yeah. Yeah. Max performance is the one that I run just because it's really light and the shadow, the shadowing mm -hmm. is also very light. So it's, it's your calm what you want. But it, I used to rock high. So if you like high, do it, man. Mm -hmm. Does that cost you a lot of FPS or not really? No, because uh, this setting, along with most of the stuff, will be changing. Like, it won't impact your performance unless you hit GP bound. It's so, like you see how mm -hmm. you're like okay. at forty percent GP mm -hmm. usage. You could mm -hmm. you could turn on HPAO to colored ultra right now, and you won't see any performance impact whatsoever because it should only affect your your GP bound performance. See, mm -hmm. so there's yeah. there's nothing. Obviously, you can see your GP usage shot up a little bit increasing yeah, yeah, um, yeah at least he's having some work to do for a change yeah exactly <laughs> yeah <laughs> and the yeah. next thing i want to do if you go back over to the road to the car i'm going to show off in the next setting should help with clarity yeah so you see when you face towards that train again you see how it has mm -hmm. the, as the textures get further away it sort of gets more blurry on the road like on the yeah. train tracks and stuff like as that as if it's a foggy yeah no 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 no. like on the road actually you see oh the, you mean like the, the texture yeah. just splits mm -hmm. yeah uh, if you go ahead, switch your anisotropic filtering from per texture to on. See how that got a lot clearer? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's forcing a higher level of anisotropic filtering. So there's different, the different levels of anisotropic filtering. You might see in like other games, it'll say like 2x, 4x, 8x, yeah. 16. When you see that, that's the amount of samples that's taking per texture to sort of scale the texture to be properly displayed to your camera position. Because uh -huh. when it's not facing directly at the camera, it sort of has to interpolate how the texture is going to be displayed. And anisotropic helps it be clearer when it's not, you know, in a normal uh, 90 degree viewpoint directly towards you. That's I love on like this looks so much better. Um, mm -hmm. Her texture obviously helps too, but you have extra GPU headroom. So on is like, on's, on's the most intensive because it forces a higher level. So like, instead of it being say, for example, per texture, where it's trying to figure out what level to use based on each texture, 
on is just trying to force a global value that's higher, uh, mm -hmm. a higher amount of samples globally. At SSR, we didn't cover that. That's screen space reflections. You probably have room to bump that up too, but we'll do that after we set the DLDSR thing, and then we'll see what room you have at that point. So this is fine. You can customize your save. post effects. Yeah, you can save for now. And I, if you could, just reload into the raid, um, and then yeah. we'll do DLDSR after you load back in. So go to your NVIDIA control panel. So what you want to do in here is you see where it says DSR factors. So that right there, you can click a, click on that. That's mm -hmm. where we're going to set. Global or per game? Uh, in global. You mm -hmm. can't do it on Tarkov. You have to do it globally. Uh, so okay. you set here. Uh, go ahead and hit that. Hit the arrow. It should be 1.78 times. We're not going to push it too crazy. Uh, the DSR smoothness as well. You can go ahead and click on that. Once we set the resolution in game, say you can lower it if it's too smooth or keep it or push it up if it's too sharp. For now, you can leave it at the default though. A lot of people run at okay. the default. And free. then you can hit apply. It should not change your resolution so far. What this will do is it'll just allow you to set at the higher resolution and then it'll downscale from that higher resolution to your native. So now that you're here, that's done. Mm -hmm. You can go back into the game and then you want to set, go to settings. Yeah, in settings. Mm -hmm. Graphics. And then you're going to need to set the screen mode to full screen for this to work properly. Okay. I should still be able to see it. Just hit save there so it actually locks into full screen. Yeah. Okay. And then go back in. And then in the resolution, we're going to want to bump that up. So it'll be past your monitor's native resolution. Okay. Uh, yep, three four. That should be it right there. The nineteen twenty. Set it to that, okay. and then Unsafe. save. Yep. See the the overlay got smaller. Mm. Mm -hmm. But so yeah, see yeah. now we got that on. Windows are flickering a little bit, but you can see how your your FPS didn't move there. You see that? Uh, yeah, yeah. You're still at seventy oh, yeah. percent usage, and then to counteract it, um, mm -hmm. and to use DLSS's anti-aliasing. You can then turn mm -hmm. DLSS on to quality. See how that looks for you. So keep those values as they yep. are. And then DLSS quality. Quality. Okay. What this is doing is it's rendering at like 66% of that higher up resolution. So this should be mm -hmm. more close to your native resolution, but then being upscaled again. You see how those windows over there got a lot more stable? Yeah. There. They yep. Don't seem to hit you straight away in your eyes. Mm hmm. Like I said, look at we're still. <laughs> 56 percent dude oh my god okay that's all right <laughs> that's have you want right. to push your first? no because uh i mean if you wanted to you could honestly but i don't know how far you could try 2.25 you have a 40 90 if you want to just uh, keep, have keep, it on both. keep it on both yeah because yeah, okay. you can then you'll be able to switch in between them and then you can bump it up even further you see that one up there 3a 4a yep mm -hmm. that should be i think that's the exact resolution for 4k right there that's at 4K then, boom. And then this is 4K with DLSS on quality. How's that feeling? Yeah, it looks, looks all right, I think. I know it's <laughs> it's foggy and cloudy as hell, so it's, yeah. it's hard to tell. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, this image so far looks, I mean, it, this even with Discord. It does look really good. It looks yeah. really good. If you tab out, it can mess mm -hmm. with the resolution again because you're it's not rendering the monitor like your desktop isn't upscaled if you went into your ah, okay. if you went to your windows settings and then set that up to you know this resolution which you totally could if you wanted um mm -hmm. then you wouldn't have that issue anymore uh it's just then obviously so could the, you so I could run a borderless basically um yeah then you i believe you could run a borderless then yeah should set correctly mm -hmm. good could you show me that after yeah, yeah i could i mean if you want to do it right now you can it's fine just tab out now Mm -hmm. Sorry, just the Discord stream's taking a second. Okay. And then go to your Windows settings. And then you want to, whatever monitor that this is on. This one. That's on mm -hmm. monitor two. Okay. So set that. You click on that. Set it up to that. Oh, so yep. to this one. Mm -hmm. Keep changing. Keep. And now, after you set it one more time in game and do that reset thing, like I told you about, then it should be good. And now you won't have to worry about it when you're all tapping. Fantastic. Okay. Yeah. And with that, to keep this video short, we went over Process Lasso and the NVIDIA Control Panel briefly. 
but we didn't do too much in there besides just tweak a couple background processes to be on a single core, move them out of the way of the game. The normal stuff that I've done in some of my other videos. Feel free to check those out if you're interested. And just to let you know the results, we went into Street Scav as you see on screen and the performance was all right. He said it didn't really change too much from what he saw when he was playing beforehand. But the good thing is that his visual fidelity has dramatically increased. I mean, the game looks phenomenal with the settings he's running now. And with that being said, thank you guys for watching. And if you have any tips for me and terminology for me to address what was happening earlier with the RAM issues, I want to get that right. So please educate me in the comments below because I want to know your guys' opinion and I love hearing from you guys and learning from you guys because some of you out there do have some more experience than me especially when it comes to ram overclocking so please do let me know what you think in the comments i appreciate all your support and i appreciate those in the discord who helped talk me through and discuss this issue with me so i could you know clarify it slightly in the video and then also clarify it later in the comments whenever i come back after we've done the testing. We just couldn't get the testing done before this video rolled out, so that's why that was at that point in the video. As per usual, if you guys liked it, hit the usual buttons. Thank you for watching to the end of the video, and I will see you guys either Friday at 6.30 p.m. CST, or for PC Sherpa Live at Sunday, 1.30 p.m. CST. And with that, this is Clem, who has edited too much, clocking out. Later.